my name is Cassia Williams. I'm the Sedgwick County 4-H Entomology Leader. I started in 4-H way back at seven years old and not too far after I started in the Entomology Project. Since then, I've worked as a junior leader in the project and worked on the state level, um, not on the action team, but very closely with uh, my father and mother both being on the action team. I volunteered at the state fair and then last year I had the opportunity to judge. So one of the things that we see at the state fair is um, some incorrect pinning when it comes to butterflies. Just because they're a bigger insect and they're more frail, I think people tend to get a little um, anxious about pinning them um, or they just don't know how to go about it. So a couple things I want to start with. I just want to start with this diagram. You guys have seen this diagram already in one of the other um, pinning uh, videos. Um, so we're just going to deal with the butterflies and moth diagram here. So as you'll see, the pin goes through the very center of the insect and we'll start to see how they start to spread these insects. So the big thing when we're pinning anything related to moths or butterflies is the bottom line of the, or the bottom angle of the top wing has to be at a 90 degree angle. So this one's actually just a little bit low for what we're looking for, not by much, but we really want to make sure that this line here is in a 90 degree angle and that bottom wing is going to tuck right up underneath it. We're going to use all of these vein structures to our advantage as we're pulling these wings up because this is where we're going to put our pins so that we're not ripping those um, scaly parts of the, the wings off. So a couple of things that we need um, for pinning, like you guys have already talked about, we've got our um, entomology pins here, we've got our sewing pins, we've got our styrofoam. You'll notice when we're pinning butterflies, we have grooves cut out into our styrofoam. So this is where we're gonna set the body of the insect. So make sure that the groove is deep enough and wide enough for the bottom of your insect, or the body of your insect. So this one is here is way too small because we're not able to get this big moth's um, body in down into this group. You'll also need either paper strips or I've seen people use wax strips or wax paper strips as well um, in addition to your insect and that's all you need. We're not going to use a pinning block for this one because it's hard to get that um, pinning block in between the wings of the, the moth or the butterfly. Um, but always make sure as we're pinning we try to avoid as much hands-on to the scales as possible. So we can do a little bit on the underside, but make sure anytime we're handling the insect, we're holding onto this body part of the insect. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up, pick her up. She was caught, um, um, this one was caught on Wednesday. Um, I'm gonna pick up one of my thicker pins and I'm gonna go, um, yeah, um, go through the center of the body. While I'm thinking about it, it's not a she, it's a he looking at the antenna. Um, I just said one of the two, um, but it's definitely a male. Um, I'm gonna try to put the pin through. I'm gonna hold on the bottom. See if I can get around these big furry legs. Whoops, and I lost a leg. That's okay with butterflies because we're not gonna be able, and butterflies and moths because we're not gonna be able to see it. So I'm gonna hold the pin up straight and I can see where she's he, he, uh, is kind of, the body is at an angle, and I'm going to look forward. Okay, she, he, I'm going to keep saying that, people. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pull out the pin part of the way through the body. We don't want to pull it all the way through. We're just going to pull it part of the way, and I'm going to pull it a little bit further forward. And it's okay, mom, dad, grandpa, aunts, uncles, to help at this point because um, I know it can be a little difficult for 4 -Hers. Uh, We're still a little bit, let's see, I'm actually going to, let's see, it takes a little bit of concentration here, that looks better. And I'm going to go ahead and just eyeball to see if I've got that quarter of an inch up top. Um, it's a little bit harder to see. Um, through there, but I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I've got that quarter of an inch up top um, and see if I can't get my fingers in between. And now I'm going to go ahead and put it in my styrofoam. So what I try to do when I stick it in the styrofoam is get the wings right at the level so that as I pull them down, it's not either overlapping and there's that break in it or the wings are coming out of the styrofoam at an angle like this. 
Um, and here's where you can use two hands or you can use one hand. Um, so um, if you're working by yourself, you can take your um, paper, that's what this is called, paper, um, and just bring one side to the side. I've also seen people use the wax paper here so they can see better what they're doing. If there's two people and you've got two four hands, go and have some go ahead and have somebody hold it down um, for you so you can see what's going on. So it's a little more difficult. Um, I think I got it there. Thank you. Um, to hold down here. If you're working by yourself, you can go ahead and stick a pin um, so you can take your hands out. Um, and use both hands, but if you're working with two, you can have somebody else hold the paper for you. What we're trying to do is get that 90 degree angle. That's the biggest part um, of getting this, this polyphemous moth um, pinned. I'm going to need thicker pins though because this is going to be too thin. So let me pull a couple more pins out here. Um, on this moth, the big vein structure is going to be right along this top edge here. So the closer I am to the body, the thicker the vein is, just like um, us humans. So as we're closer to our heart, the, the vein structure gets thicker. Um, so I'm going to grab just underneath this vein and pull up. You, we try not to stick through um, the pin uh, or through the, in, through the wing. Um, it happens if it needs to be. I try to pick the smallest um, pin possible so that I'm not putting big holes. Um, and so right there, I went ahead and put the pin through the wing, not out here where you can see it rip, but right close to the insect there. And as you're looking, as he's got the camera up here, you can kind of see that there's a large vein that comes out the bottom of the wing. So not right at this top angle, but there's a large vein that you can see on most insects. Um, and I'm just going to grab into that one just like I did for the other one. Um, and you're just kind of brushing right along it. You don't want to stick it and drag it. Just brush right along it and see if you can't catch it. And this is a pretty thin pin. Um, so looking there, I've got a pretty good 90 degree angle. My insect kind of twisted on me, so I'm hoping when I go to do the other side that it'll straighten out that abdomen. Just so you can see different types, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side with paper. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna kind of catch the wing coming down on the inside, and I'm gonna pull it out to the side. Um, and I'm gonna use uh, quilting pins this time um, always come in at an angle when you're coming in to do these pins because if you do straight up and down the paper is going to uh, sh shift on you. So I'm making it very loose right now so you can see there's a space there where I can kind of stick my finger under. That'll give me room to move the wing without taking off any scales. Once again we're going to find that thick vein on the top of the the moth here and I'm just going to try to pull it all the way up and mirror the other side. And this one's going to be kind of twisted in here just because the other side moved a little further on me. So that's the top wing. I'm going to go ahead and pull this bottom wing up underneath. Oops, I don't want to lose any scales. There we go. So if I look at it, this one, and I'm going to turn it around so you can see it. As I'm looking at it, the body's kind of twisted. So I need to actually move this one up a little bit higher to mirror this side. Because this side looks better coming out of the, the body. Whereas this side, we're kind of lower than that 90 degree. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one down. So I'm going to keep coming in at an angle. And then what I like to do is once I pull the bottom out, I give a little bit of a tug, not much, but that just makes sure there's that tension there so that it won't slip on me. And I'm going to rotate this around one more time and we'll fix this right side of the wing. Pull it up just a little bit higher. Let's see if she'll move with me. He'll move with me. There we go. Pull this vein right up underneath like I did last time. 
It's okay if the first couple times you rip ones. This is part of the learning process. Uh, if you only have one to put in your, your insect collection, go ahead and put in your collection for the fair and just know that next year you can always add more. Um, another thing you want to look at um, and this is the last thing before you finish up, is you want to make sure that you kind of got the same angle or the same notch on both sides. So if you can see, um, this side's a little bit higher. This is where I want it. So this one's a little bit lower. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of pull this one side up just a smidge, not much. Um, and I've got it too tight there. Um, and I can't. It's still a little bit more. There we go. Now that looks better. If you wanted to, if the insect was starting to droop, you could always put a cradle underneath the abdomen here to keep it up. This one's not so much. You can also, if the antenna aren't in the area you want, you can use pins to kind of move those t antenna areas so that they look a little bit better um, flattened out um, and it doesn't have to be anything fancy just kind of move them to where you want them um, so that they they align straight with the insects that's the basics when it comes to pinning butterflies always make and moths um, so always make sure there's that 90 degree angle um, if that's too far low, it's covering up these lower wings and we don't get to see the pattern. So pull the wings up. Um, don't be afraid to. If it's starting to feel stiff, go ahead and stick it in the relaxing chamber that um, David talked about earlier. Um, that stand, sand in the, the bucket. Um, and from there, just keep practicing. Um, it's going to take a couple times, but you'll get the hang of it. Thank you.